What's up? Wayne Baron here with CFF Coding Source, and today we're inside of ESXi 6.5. What we need to do is that we need to copy the existing VM so that we can recreate that server. That is a working server, so we need to have a working server to put into the new environment. I've already done it over to one folder, so now we're going to do it over into a new folder. Okay, this right here is the IP address. We'll go ahead and load it here. This is the IP address, the same as right here, 192.168.2.213. So with this selected, we're going to choose open. Come over here, we're going to type in root, hit enter, and then type in our password. Now I've already got everything configured, so we're just going to go ahead and just paste it in. And what this is, is VMKFS tools. And it's going to copy the information from this location. So this is the VMFS, the volume, the name of the data store. Uh, just get over here the name of the data store, the current location of the of the file, and then the file name. So we're going to copy it from that current location to the destination, which is going to take it over here to the Web Core Five, and then the Web Core Five VMDK. And once we hit enter. It is going to start copying that. Now, one other thing is that we added this trigger right here, which makes it a thin provision. This slash D thin makes it a thin provision. And that's what we want we, because it's originally a thin provision. So we want to keep it as a thin provision. And while that is doing that, so we're going to right click when to choose a new session. Now, the one thing that that does happen is that whenever we're going to move this out to the side is that whenever you you transfer files over so we're going to come over here we're going to, we're going to browse into our data store we're going to come over here inside of the web core 5. now i've already copied this file over right here see as you can tell it's web core 02 we're going into 05 and see it's the same name right now However, once it transfers it over, it's going to rename it. So if we look over here at 04, as you can see there, we've got 04 sitting right here. Uh, the only thing I need to do there is that I actually got to rename it here. So I did not rename it. So I'm gonna have to do it to both files. I'm gonna have to do a rename. So what we're gonna do is that we, let's go ahead and do a rename on this one. So let's go ahead and log in. All right, so what we're going to do is that we're going to go into this location and we're going to rename this file to 003. We're going to make it identical to this one over here. So first we need to actually go into that location. So we're going to, okay, so we're going to come over here. We're going to CD and then we're going to CD into this location right here. Go ahead and hit enter. And now we're in that location. So now what we can do is that we're going to go in and we're going to change that name over. So this right here is 011. 2003. So let's go ahead and paste that in. Yana says, as you can tell, we've got 011 Web Core 4 VMDK. We're going to change it to 003 Web Core 4 VMDK. So let's go ahead and hit enter. Go ahead and refresh it. And there we go. They are named. So now we need to come over here. We need to do the same thing on 5. We need to rename this file right here. And we're also going to have to name that file now. So the script we just used was for renaming the VMDK file. Now for renaming the, the VMX file. So this right here is the script for renaming this file. However, it does not rename it. What it does is that it copies it and then creates a new file. So it's going to copy this file and it's going to create a new one with 003 Web Core 5 on it. Okay, so we're going to paste this in, which is 011 Web Core 2, which is what this is right here. We're going to rename it to 003 Web Core 05. So let's go ahead and hit enter. And let's refresh it. And there we go. So now we can come over here. We can right click and we can delete this file because it's no longer needed because we got our brand new file sitting right there. Now it seems like it might have already moved everything over. So let's bring this over. Yes, it has completed. So now we can go in here with this still open and we can rename this file from the 011 Web Core 05 to the 003 Web Core 
05. So it's going to be identical to this one. Go ahead and hit enter. And then come over here, refresh, and now both of them are identical. And we're going to come over here. We're going to choose virtual machine. We're going to create a new virtual machine. Come over here. We're going to do 003 dash web core 4 and do windows come down to 2016 next next again and then we're going to get rid of this we're going to change this to two we're going to add in a total of four network cards we're going to add in two cd-rom drives and then we're going to come over here we're going to choose existing hard drive and come over here to the web core 4 that is what we are doing right now yes web core 04003 we're going to choose this hard drive right here and then we're going to select it and it's th it's showing thick provisioned why so i'm gonna have to do some checking in on that i don't understand why it is at thick provision but anyway so we're just going to go to next and come down here almost forgot about adding in our windows server and then come down here and add in our tools and let's go ahead and click on next and it's thick provision i really hate that go ahead and click on finish keep in mind that if you do this if you create a new vm from an existing working server you have to go in and change its ip address and its name its logon and so then three things have got to be changed in order for this to function properly if not then it will cause a cluster i copied from my web core 2 to my web core 4 and 5 so i cannot start web core 2 until web core 4 and 5 have been reconfigured with their settings and not the existing web core 2 settings i am wayne baron for cff coding source y'all have a good one now bye, -bye.